Hey everyone, welcome to the Urban Outlander. My name's Jordan. Thanks so much for checking out the video. It's hotter than Hades here in New York City. I don't know where you guys are, but I'm sweating. So we're here talking about Outlander season two. This is episode eight, The Fox's Lair. We are back in Scotland. What? A relief. I love how this episode opens with the rolling hills. We got the music. We're all back. The family's back together. It's the gang. Jenny, Ian, and, 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 uh, <laughs> so many people I can't even remember everybody that's there in that scene. Um, it's Jenny, it's Ian, it's Jamie, it's Claire, it's Murtaugh, it's Fergus, it's the small children. I mean, like, everybody's there. We even have, uh, the, the old cook who I can't remember her name, but, you know, everybody's back. I actually really want to talk about, um, two things. One, the opening credits. So, again, Mr. Bear McCreary, the genius that he is, can you believe that he is also the same composer who's done The Walking Dead? I mean, he's done so much. The Walking Dead, Black Sails, Outlander, and he's done a lot of work, of course. But I don't know. I, I'm still dumbfounded at his talent and... I mean, the theme music to The Walking Dead scares the crap out of me. It's kind of like the Jaws theme, where any time I hear it, I just like freak out and I'm, I'm expecting zombies to come crashing through a door. I don't even watch that show, but it terrifies me. So kudos for him for instilling terror and fear in, in, in me, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. The Scottish bagpipes are back. We got some of the drumming, a little bit more militaristic style to sort of, I don't know, like foretell the Jacobite Rebellion and what's going to happen at Culloden. The images. The images for me are the most interesting. Two images for me that really popped out. So there is an image of a car. There's two images of a car. When I first saw it, the first pass, I was like, oh, that's the car uh, that Jamie and uh, <laughs> that's the car that Claire and Frank um, when they go to visit Scotland, that's their vehicle. It's funny how sometimes your brain just sort of fills in gaps and information for yourself. I'm watching it again and I'm like, oh no, no, no. That vehicle is from like the 50s or it's from like the 60s. This is an older car. It's that image of uh, the car kind of over by a lake and there's this wide landscape. You see two people walking out. And then the second image is uh, driving towards Lollybrock. That was interesting to see. And um, there's also this other mystery image of uh, that big headlight, that big spotlight that's moving. It seems to me maybe on the back of a car or of a truck or a truck. And um, I paused it and it seems like soldiers are walking down this dark pathway at night. So anyway, so some mystery images that, uh, I don't know, I find it interesting what they're doing with the opening titles now. What are they going to do for season three? Are going to change the titles halfway through season three? Because we're going to have a season three, right? All right, so there's that. I actually really want to talk about Leary. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about her. So many fans have such strong feelings about her. And for me, since I'm a dragonfly and amber virgin, um, I do understand because it's impossible to be involved in the Outlander fandom and not catch whiffs of people talking and the characters they're looking forward to seeing or they loathe. It's just like impossible to not get glimpses of what, how people in the Outlander fandom feel about certain characters. And Leary is a strong point of contention for so many people. And I understand that in this episode, this is not exactly what happens in the book. The writers and producers have taken it upon themselves for a little creative license to sort of add her into the storyline in this way. Because as Anne Kenny, the screenwriter for this uh, episode says, uh, you know, she does something later and they kind of need her in this episode to sort of substantiate a little bit or, or give, set us up for something that happens later. Now, I can only imagine what Leary has in mind for our favorite couple down the road. I'm a little scared because Leary is a, is a deviant character. You know, we may have this old fox in Lord Love It, but my goodness, I mean, maybe uh, Leary will be his foxess, <laughs> fox dress. Fox, and it held me out here. She's gone through this sort of spiritual reformation. She's repentant. She's seen the error of her ways. We see her going to Claire in that opening, uh, that first scene with them, with each other. And she's crying. Please, 
Claire forgive me, you know, I my evil ways, all these things. And so on the first pass when I watched it, I thought maybe she's being truthful. Maybe there's something to it, you know? Because by the end of that episode, it's clear that Leary obviously still has tremendous feelings for Jamie. Did she have any sort of miss? misdirected intentions from the start? Is she sort of telling herself this story and she's telling other people that I've seen the error of my ways, please forgive me, but maybe she actually still has this ulterior motive to do anything she can to get Jamie back. So how often do we tell ourselves the, a lie? Oh, you know, I really thought about it, I'm so sorry please forgive me, or, you know, I, you know, whatever story we want to tell ourselves where we think we're doing something as a sort of, um, as a grievance for something we've done in the past, that we think we're actually working towards bettering ourselves when really it's just a story that we're telling us and other people when really we still have this part of ourselves that is kind of the bad habit or for Larry, kind of like the nasty evil girl still lingers behind her and sort of um, doesn't really, isn't ready to go away. You know, is Leary really being truthful? I don't think so. Does Leary have some other trickery up her sleeves? I think she does, but I'm, I, part of me wonders, maybe she was, again, telling her the story in the beginning, and then later she changes her mind and says Act to herself, actually. I'm going to do anything I can to get James Fraser back and win his love. And, you know, let's be honest, can we blame her? You know, if James Fraser walked into any of our lives, like, I feel like we might just be as deviant and nasty as, as, as Leary. Am I the only person? I, I, I know I'm not. I don't know, like, how many people out there really want to admit that they might be just as deviant as she is, but I'm going to be the first one to say, out in the open, maybe I'd want to burn his witch. Of a, of a wife too. I'm just saying, I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't know. God only knows what she'll do later down the road, I can only imagine, but you know, you gotta give it to the girl. She'll do anything she can to, <laughs> to win his love, even though she's completely delusional. I mean, that's an important factor too, to remember. Um, all right, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to condone her behavior, I'm just trying to explain it, and I'm trying to say that I understand some of it. But I also kind of like how spicy she still, she still is. Like in season one, you know, she comes to Jamie on the banks of the river and like has this nothing but a corset on under her shawl or coat. And so um, I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of excited to see her still use some of that sauciness. You know, she may have gone through some sort of like religious purge for herself, but the truth is, is like. The girl still has the boys looking down her corset. So La Dame Blanche kind of comes back, you know, Jamie just keeps telling everybody that his wife is La Dame Blanche. Um, if I were her, I would have been like, stop telling everybody I'm a witch. Because every single time you do that, shit goes down. Whether I'm getting burned at the stake, which of course, like, he didn't instigate that whole thing, you know, Leary. <laughs> but, you know, it happens in Paris, just like every time that phrase kind of pops up, nothing good ever really comes of it. Oh, and how about that baby scene with Jamie? That was really sweet. Uh, so much garlic that, you know, I, I'll never learn the language, but it's like so wonderful. And that bittersweet moment between him and his niece, um, really kind of touching. And um, I was curious to see what they were gonna do between Claire and, Jane, uh, Claire and Jenny um, about the tragedy of uh, Faith. And we have this sort of little moment that sort of touches on it. The fox's lair, we're building up to the rebellion. This episode was really fast paced, almost like we still haven't left like the, the hurried frenzy of Paris. We sort of have brought it with us to Scotland, but it's okay because we're in Scotland now. So it's like, so we feel a little bit better. I felt like we weren't in Lollybrock long enough. How great was it to see Jenny and Ian again? And we just, oh, we didn't spend a lot of time with them. Um, Murtaugh's back, thank goodness. I hope that that trip to Portugal really worked out. Uh, you know, with the Frasers, it's never quiet domesticity. It always has to get screwed up and they always gotta like get back on the road and try to fix, you know, disasters. Jamie has to step up to the plate and be the leader that we're calling, that we're all expecting him to be and uh, be the laird, not just of Lollybrock, but also be the leader of soldiers. So clearly we're building up to that and we see that in this episode. He, you know, has to really stay at the helm and 
garner the attention and the fervor that is needed to rally the troops. Weird to like know what's gonna happen, but still feel like we're supposed to not really know what's gonna happen. There's just a very strange balance that's happening uh, so far with the season. Well, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> this episode's been pretty good. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next episode. Uh, check me out on theurbanoutlander.com. Let's talk about it on Twitter. Let's do Facebook. Uh, you can leave some comments on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, see you next week. Episode 9. Ugh. No. Episode 8. Episode 8, right? Oh my god. What episode are we on? We're on episode... We're going to be episode 9. <laughs> Sorry. It's the heat. It's making me uh, delirious. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see each other next time.